So I've spent a few weeks with the Apple MacBook Pro M2 14 inch model, and I must say, I love this laptop on so many levels. So is it time to finally throw in the towel on all the Windows laptops I love so much and fully transition my studio back to the Apple ecosystem, which I love so much in my college days? In this video, we're gonna attack the price points, the value propositions, the build quality, and the performance of both a stack of Windows laptops up against the latest MacBook Pro M2. Now, first and foremost, I am a huge fanboy of the build quality of the Apple MacBook Pros. Ever since I got my first Apple MacBook unibody, I fell in love with not only the build, but the ecosystem and the operating system of Apple products. And I begrudgingly switched over to Windows in about 2017 when I bought a Dell XPS 15 with an aluminum top cover and carbon fiber key deck. And I spoke on that extensively on my channel back when I first made that purchase. And I grew for my love for Windows throughout that time as Apple was lagging in performance. However, with the launch of the M1 silicone, it was time to set my sights back on Apple to see if they had what it takes to get my attention back and have me switch over back to their ecosystem. Now, kicking things off, I think they've done a really good job bringing back some of the things that we love so much about the original Apple. They gave us the scissor switch keyboard, which feels fantastic under my fingers, a large vibration click trackpad, the port selection on these laptops is finally back up to par, minus missing the USB type A, since a lot of peripherals we use still use USB type A, so you might have to pick up a dongle to go from USB type A to USB type C. But nonetheless, we have two USB type C's, a MagSafe charger port, headphone jack, and on the right side panel, we have an HDMI, USB type C, and a SD card reader. So Apple seems to be coming back around the bend with more ports, the keyboard we love, and the trackpad that we've all loved, that large trackpad. And on the 16 inch model, it's even bigger. I got the 14 because I wanted more of an on the go friendly. Now, as I switch over to look at some Windows laptops, the build quality is still great on Windows laptops. However, it's not as chic and clean as maybe your traditional Apple laptop has to offer. It's got this kind of weird ledge on the back. It has tons of ports, but they're put in weird places between weird vents. And it definitely has a really strong gamer aesthetic. And you might be thinking, Ben, why are you comparing a 16 inch laptop to a 14 inch laptop? And the reason I'm comparing some 16s to this 14 is I'm going for price point. When it comes to price point, the Apple MacBook Pro M2 Pro 14 inch model matches most closely to the stack of laptops I have here before me. I have the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. I have the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X. 16 and I have the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro. All great aluminum or magnesium alloy build quality laptops and are all around the under $2,000 price point, all with great performance. So that is why the laptops you see on the table are here. Now, in regards to ports, we have HDMI, two USB type A's, power adapter, your SD card reader, headphone jack, and then two USB type C's. Very similar port configuration to the MacBook Pro. That's why this one gets the most shining light in this head-to-head -head review of apples to oranges. Now, I know there's so many things that people are thinking about when comparing Apple's to Windows laptops, but I'm going to hit a few highlights that are most commonly talked about, and then I'm going to get into the performance differences to show why you might be surprised which one I'm going to pick for the future of my content creation here on the channel. Now, first and foremost, the elephant in the room, of course, is the fact that Apple laptops can run full performance, get great battery life, and remain fairly cool and quiet while running only on the battery. So what that means is no matter if you're in the middle of the Sahara Desert or you're in your studio and you just don't want to be plugged into the wall, you can still run full performance, whether you're a photographer, digital artist, graphic designer, video editor, and the like, motion designer perhaps, or architect. So that is where Apple laptops have really thrived with the launch of the M1 Apple silicone. When it comes to Windows laptops, you must be plugged into the charger to get full performance out of the laptop. You still get good performance on the go, and we're gonna get into that during the performance comparison, but long has lived the reputation of M1 being both power efficient and powerful. Now, that might be changing as Intel and Ryzen laptops are becoming more power efficient. Now, the second thing would, of course, be the obvious sore thumb of the operating system. Some people love the open flexibility of Windows, where other people really hate how janky Windows feels, and they like the smooth, clean user experience of Mac OS and the suite of Apple products, whether you have an iPad, you have the Apple AirPods, you have an Apple Watch, you have a MacBook Pro, you have an iPhone, right? Everything works together so seamlessly, and that is not the case when it comes to Windows products. There's so many drivers and apps and little tools and trinkets that you have have to get in order for Windows 
ecosystem to communicate well with other products. Now, for a long time, price was a factor for people, but ever since we saw the price of Windows laptops increase and the price of Apple laptops stay the same, we're starting to see a more level playing field between Apples and Windows. For instance, you can watch my full video about the fact that the Dell XPS 15 went up 84% in price over a matter of 13 years, where the Apple MacBook Pro only increased by 11%. And that is also true about the Lenovo ThinkPads and the Razer Blades. They've all increased in price while remaining fairly similar to the build quality of an Apple product. Now, punch for punch, when it all boils down to things, the performance is very important for professionals. And we're going to jump into the performance differences here, and then we're going to talk about the price point differences and which one is best for you. Now, when it comes to Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator, I run the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark to test this out. The latest M2 Pro MacBook Pro 14-inch model scores a 1,075 in the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark. That puts the laptop in third place with the X6 from Asus coming in above that laptop at 1,089. Now for the fourth place spot, you have the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro scoring a 970. And the fifth place spot, you have the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 scoring a 927. So they're all pretty much within about 100 points of each other, giving the MacBook Pro not much advantage over these laptops. However, you will get slightly better battery life than these laptops. And you can see the battery life results coming up right now on the screen for the differences between the laptops in regards to Photoshop battery life on the go. So whether you're a graphic designer, digital artist, or photographer, these are the benchmarks and battery lives that'll be most relevant to you. Now, moving on to video editing, this is an area where I saw little performance increase from M1 Pro to M2 Pro, and that really disappointed me because I thought this was going to be the year that we were going to see really strong increases where we started to pull away from Windows in a really notable way. However, we saw no difference in export time performance for 4K video editing from M1 Pro to M2 Pro, and that was severely disappointing. So looking at the screen right now, you can see for the 4K export time out of Premiere Pro, the best export time is the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro at 2 minutes and 36 seconds for a 9-minute 4K clip out of Premiere Pro, followed up by the Asus Zephyrus G14 a fantastic laptop and a great value on sale right now for probably around the thousand dollar price point oh yeah and if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability though we're going to look at some numbers here in a little bit in the video head down in the description below because those will be the most accurate live prices prices are subject to change and what i might show you in a few minutes may not actually be the price when you go to make a purchase so definitely check those out now next up would be the asus republic of gamer flow x16 at 2 minutes and 58 seconds followed up by the lenovo legion slim 7 at 3 minutes and 9 seconds now the m1 pro comes in at 5 minutes and 21 seconds when the m2 pro comes in at 5 minutes and 26 seconds so the performance differences between these laptops put the apple laptop in last place however you might say but ben didn't you say that full performance off of the charger is better on Apple MacBook Pro and that Windows can't do that? I did say that, but let's check it out from a very objective standpoint. Now, looking at the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, this would be true because the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 export time on battery power is 5 minutes and 34 seconds. So it's slightly slower than the Apple MacBook Pro M2 Pro and M1 Pro. So right there, eh, it loses by about 10 seconds. However, when we go to one of the best bang for buck laptops that money can buy from 2022 heading into 2023, as I look at the results, when I set the laptop on quiet mode, hybrid mode, and then sent it into iGPU, which basically means that I turned off the GPU performance and it's only running on CPU. So it's only running the i7-12700H. I saw a three minute and 19 second export time, two minutes faster then the MacBook Pro M2 Pro on battery power. Now you might say, okay, but what about battery life? Now that is one area that you would be correct. The battery life on the MacBook Pro is better. You can see the results coming up on the screen for the different battery life results from each of the laptops I have before me. And you can see that the MacBook Pro is substantially better, almost getting double the battery life of the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, which is a great battery life contender. Now looking at the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 in regards to battery life, 
while video editing, it's about the same as the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro. So Windows laptops are not as efficient on the go as the MacBook Pros. This is very true. However, you have to make the decision on how often you are away from a charger, how often you need to be on the go to get that performance because getting double the battery life, but half the performance, you gotta weigh out which matters more to you. All right, now moving on to 6K video editing, this is where things get really dicey. For 6K video editing, the MacBook Pro playback substantially increased from M1 Pro to M2. We had 1,800 drop frames for M1 Pro, and we've had only nine drop frames for M2 Pro. Really great results. I was excited to see those improvements. However, we saw just as good a results out of the Legion 5i Pro with 339 drop frames. And out of 16,177, you really won't notice those 300 as much as you won't notice the nine drop frames. So we're pretty much evenly placed for playback from Apple to Windows. However, again, battery life is an important consideration in this head-to-head. -head. Now, when we move to the export times, that's where things took a really wild turn. I tried to export the nine minute 6K clip to full quality 6K resolution out of the MacBook Pro, and it took well over 59 minutes to complete that task. When I went ahead and ran that same test for the Windows laptops, on average, we saw export times from about 13 minutes and 52 seconds to about 20 minutes and 12 seconds. And that 20 minute export time is from an HP Victus, which is about a $900 laptop with an Ryzen 5 5600H and RTX 3050 Ti. Now the latest Apple MacBook Pro M2, it took 59 minutes. Now the only way I was able to get that time down is switching the resolution from 6K to 4K. So I went ahead and selected the preset for 4K export, transcoding 6K to 4K, and it still took 10 minutes longer than the 5i Pro. It took 25 minutes and 51 seconds on the latest MacBook Pro M2, and 23 minutes and 37 seconds on the MacBook Pro M1 Pro. Showing that the ability for this laptop to match the performance of equally priced Windows laptops had not only not improved over M1 Pro, but it actually diminished over M1 Pro. Now, throughout this whole conversation, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Lenovo sent over three Lenovo Legion 5 Pros for us to give away when we pass 100,000 subscribers. So if you've yet to subscribe, definitely do so and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the full announcement video once we pass 100,000 subscribers so you can enter to win. Now that we've looked at video editing, let's take a quick peek at 3D modeling and architecture. The reason I say quick peek is because most programs, most mainstream programs that you're going to be using for 3D modeling and architecture can't even run natively on Apple Silicon. And so you're left running parallels. And even if you run parallels because it's now Apple Silicon and it's not running on an Intel processor, they don't even correlate sometimes in that way. So if you're serious about 3D modeling and architecture, Windows laptops are really the only way to go for you. Now, if you wanna have some debate in the comment section and give some recommendations or tips for anybody wanting to run 3D modeling architecture, then please do so. Let's open a discussion there in the comments and I'm happy to see that and uh, see the ideas that people have. Now let's talk about the value proposition. We looked at video editing and we saw that the base model MacBook Pro M2 Pro 14 inch model underperforms for 6K video editing and doesn't perform super well even for 4K video editing in regards to Premiere Pro for export times. Now I know they talk a big game for Final Cut Pro, but as far as the polls that I have run, most people are using either DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. Forgot to mention those DaVinci Resolve results, so we'll pull those up on the screen real quick. You can see that in regards to DaVinci Resolve, they do get really good export times. Some of the best compared to the other Windows laptops. So if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, then yeah, it could be a value add, but it was nothing of a landslide. There was nothing that showed that the new Apple MacBook Pro M2 created this huge, huge difference over M1 Pro or even over most Windows laptops. On average, it was about a one minute difference between the Apple laptops and the Windows laptops. Now let's talk about the price point if you would actually wanna get into an Apple laptop that has the guts you need for 6K video editing. Now, if you're looking for 6K video editing, I would do nothing less than the M2 Max or the M1 Max. But since we're looking at the Apple website, let's see what they have to offer us for the M2 Max. It's about $3,099. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. Now, if you're serious about 6K video editing, I just go ahead and spend the extra $200 in order to future-proof yourself and get the 38-core GPU. For 6K video editing, I was only testing one clip in the timeline. As soon as you start adding multiple clips, do color grading, and add B-roll and music, you're going to start to have a lot happening in your timeline. So I would recommend upgrading to 64 gigs of unified RAM. Now we're at $3,699. Now, if you know anything about 6K footage, it is very, very robust. 
My Blackmagic 6K camera at 12 to 1 quality is 6 gigs per minute. So I can use up 80 to 200 gigs worth of footage very quickly. And so for me, I would do nothing less than a 2 terabyte hard drive for this computer. Because you're going to add your programs, you're going to have other files on the computer, and so that'll add up rather quickly. So right there, to me, the entry-level price point for a MacBook Pro for 6K video editing is around the $4,099 point. That, to me, is quite steep and really gets away from that entry-level base model price that I thought was such a value add. But when you look at it compared to something like the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, or the Asus Republic of Gamer X16, that is a substantial increase in price. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what pricing we have for the Windows laptops that I just discussed. Now if you want to get into the Lenovo Legion Slim 7, which is a great option, you're going to pay about $1,749 at the recording of this video, and that's going to come with the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX, 16 gigs of RAM, a RX 6800S, which is 8 gigs of VRAM, and a 1 terabyte SSD. Now, the first thing I would do is I would upgrade the 16 gigs to probably 24 or 40 gigs by either getting a 16 gig stick to swap out with the 8 that is swappable because there's only one swappable RAM stick in this laptop, or I would get a 32 gig stick and that would take the laptop up to 40 gigs. That's probably about a 60 to $100 upgrade. So now we're at $1,849. From there, I would go ahead and I would upgrade the one terabyte drive to a two terabyte drive probably about an 80 to $120 upgrade. So now we're at $1,949 for a laptop that kicks booty in 6K video editing. Now looking at the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16, this is actually not the model that I would fully recommend, but right now it's the only one available on bestbuy.com. And this is the RTX 3060 version. This will still get great performance in 6K video editing, however, not as much as you would get with the RTX 3070 Ti. Now the RTX 3070 Ti version retail is $2,699, and that comes with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So you're getting at a higher price point there, but we're still not at that $4,000 range. However, if you wanted to get this laptop, I would go ahead and do the same upgrades that I mentioned with the Slim 7. I would upgrade to 32 gigs or 64 gigs, because you can swap both RAM sticks with this laptop, and I would upgrade the one terabyte SSD to two terabytes. Now the best bang for buck laptop that money can buy in comparison to getting the Apple MacBook Pro, if we're talking apples to oranges, would be the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro. Now the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro starts at around $1,279. However, that's not the one I would specifically recommend. I would scroll down a little bit and the results you were seeing on the benchmarks were coming from the RTX 3060 version, which starts at $1,599. So I'm gonna go ahead and click build my PC. And we're going to jump in here. So it comes with the i7-12700H, 16 gigs of RAM, which you could upgrade to 32 from the factory. But I would honestly go ahead and purchase my own RAM after the fact and get better quality RAM. This RAM is good, but you could find better RAM in the future. You could upgrade to a one terabyte drive from the factory and then actually purchase a second SSD because this laptop actually comes with two M.2 slots, so you could have one with a terabyte and one with two terabytes, or you could have one with 512, like it came with originally, which is honestly what I would do. I would get it with 512, and then I would buy a secondary two terabyte to keep all of your footage and files on. And then lastly, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and upgrade this laptop to a 3070. However, that's not the configuration that we're allowed to upgrade to here on this page. So we'll go back a page real quick and check that. So this laptop, you're in for about $1,560. Make those same upgrades that I mentioned for the Slim 7 and the X16, and you'll be sitting at around $1,700 out the door for a laptop that's actually more powerful than the MacBook Pro 14 with less battery life, of course, but again, these are the decisions that you will have to make. Remember, if you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability, I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Click or tap the screen here for more videos about the MacBook Pro. I've got a lot of ideas and thoughts floating around in my head, and I'm organizing them into separate videos, so you'll definitely want to check those out. I'll see you over in one of those videos.